Welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. Jersey Jim here. Uh, today's trip is funded in part by Wawa, as are all my trips. Gassed up in the tank and in the belly. Every trip. Love the Wawa. Take out stock in Wawa, people. You make a mint. Um, right, we're going to Island Beach State Park to go clamming today when I took my kayak out. Um, Behind Island Beach, oh, four days ago, it seems like weeks ago. Um, there's some guys clamming there, so I got my recreational clamming license through a wonderful, tremendously well developed government website. It sucked. I would have had it three days ago. Should only take it in 15 minutes. No, 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 no. It's a government website. It sucked. But I got it. Hell yeah, I got it. So, uh, to Island Beach, five, 500 traffic lights later. Well, not really. Probably like 47. But still, kind of outrageous. So we'll be there. I did bring a fishing rod, because I can't be down the shore without a fishing rod. Uh, bluefish are here. They're, they're in the bay. It's going to be a wet day, boys. It's pouring out. So, you know. Whatever, gotta do something today. All right, we made it, boys. We got, uh, I counted the, the traffic lights here. Actually, I, I counted them, and I wasn't gonna write them down on paper, but then I thought back on the wisdom of Bear Grylls, who said, uh, you know, if you're, if you're lost in the woods, put a rock in your pocket every time you travel a certain distance. So I counted about one, two, three, four, five, six, 60, 62 traffic lights between Wawa and Marlton, I think, and uh, and here, unbelievable. I didn't drink my piss. The Bear Girls would have drank his piss, but yeah, we're here. Boys, here's what we got so far. So I got the sizing for clams. It, it it's so they they keep adding another one like every year. So we got that just fell in there. That's considered a button neck, which is illegal. Uh, they have to be an inch and a half from side to side right there. I don't think that's an inch and a half. This one's definitely not. That would be a button neck, real small. So middle neck, middle neck, little neck, eh, small top neck, big little neck, big top neck, cherry stone. Those are the sizes. And like I said, I'm not going to put those button necks in my bag, so I'm uh, reminded to measure them. Oh, get back here. So I've been here for about 40 minutes, I'd say. Well, not too bad. I mean, a lot of little ones. Some of them are so small, they don't they don't get you know the tines of the rake. This is the rake I'm using, just a dirt rake. And well, what I've been doing is just dragging the rake behind me like this, you know, until I until I feel it run over a shell. And it's really uh, until you do it, you can tell the, the shells, the uh, clam shells, are kind of anchored to the bottom. But once you find one as you're walking around, as you're scouting, it's a good idea to comb that area. And it's very likely, well, it's probable that there'll be more there. As the bottom out here in the bay, some of it's, you know, some of it's this uh, rotting seagrass, eelgrass. And then some of it is uh, like powdery. And clams need, when the clam is in its uh, zygote stage, Nice little neck there. Clams are in their zygote stage. They need a very, very um, uh, they they can't get clogged up with uh, sediment. They need a sediment-free environment in which to begin their lives. So once you find one, it's likely that others found that environment uh, agreeable and set up house right next to them. So that's all I'm doing, and actually I've gotten more right here uh, than I have in walking around. <laughs> that's a brick. They have to be uh, thrown back as well. So far, boys, they're about 30. Just measured them. These are all keepers. These are all they're all going back. So one of the reasons I uh, came here and was so uh, eager to get my clamming uh, registration is that 
you know, I was here the other day, uh, the tour of the Pine Barrens and blue fishing from the Hobie. And uh, this spot looked pretty good for clams. I, you know, like, I'm not that well versed at clamming, but it looked like it'd be a logical spot to go. So these are gonna go right off of that. You see where I'm at here? Right off of that, in fact, right in line with those roots. Um, we'll count it off. But one day when I'm out here fishing, I'll stop back here and they'll still be here or they'll be somewhere around here. Oh yeah, we're gonna count it off, let's see. And if you come down here and you wanna eat my clam, <laughs> you feel free to, just leave me a message. That's about five paces right off of this. See how that's like five paces right there. Help yourself, enjoy. Now I didn't bring any food or drink out here. Just what I needed to uh, procure some clams. Now I'm gonna uh, get the get my neck knife today. I was thinking I could use that, but last time I used it, um, cut mackerel with it. So, and I haven't cleaned it yet. Just like the hole in my waders, I haven't dealt with that. Just go fishing all the time. Don't don't. Just don't. All right, hang on a minute. We're gonna shuck one of these. Now I can count the amount of clams on the yeah, that's big. Clams on the half shell I've eaten uh, pro raw, probably on two hands and a foot. Um, it's kind of like Russian roulette. These things, you never know what you're gonna get. I would not recommend doing this with a with a sharp knife. You need a clam knife. Nice looking clam. Ah, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like I, I have muck mouth. <laughs> I got it. I got no gum. I got nothing with me but a cigar, and that clearly is not helping. So, oh, down the hatch. Ugh. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad. If I only had a flipping cold one with me, that would be a lot better. All right, back in the bag. Back to clamming. Probably for an hour. I gotta go home and cook these things tonight, so. Another two, two and a half hour drive home. Boys, wound up with about 50. And uh, went ahead and drained all the water out of the bag. Now, clams, you wanna keep them cold. Uh, 38 to 43, 45 tops, but you want to keep them dry. You don't want them wet. If they get wet, they're going to... I'll explain all that when I get home. I'm going to be making uh, Clams Casino when I get home. And uh, a few of them, you know, they're, they're fresh out of the water. They'll stay good. You know, they'll stay alive. If you keep them right, they'll stay alive for up to... Uh, try to get you out of the wind here. It didn't work, did it? They'll probably stay alive for up to uh, two weeks. As long you got to call them every day. You got to make sure there's no dead ones, no leakage, that type of stuff. Uh, I'll I'll explain this all in painstaking detail. I'm, I'm sure uh, a little bit later. But now I got to drain my waders, which is going to be interesting and change. Oh, you got a Canadian nickel on yeah, there or something? Texas quarter. A Texas quarter? No way, dude. That's freaking awesome. Stock removal? Uh-huh. You didn't uh, harden it yet? No, not yet. That's beautiful, Dill. Look at the angulation on the... Very okay, nice, buddy. We're half hour looking for that quarter. Did you? Oh, is that what all the quarters are upstairs for? That's beautiful, Dill. I like that. Yeah. Hardened. Gone in the oven for two cycles of... Uh, 450 degrees for one hour each. Excellent. Uh, one, no, two hours each, I think. I don't know. I'll look at the chart again. So, one of the easiest ways to cook uh, clams is in the microwave. A lot of people don't want to believe that, though. Yeah? You can cook anything in the microwave. You can seafood in the microwave. One minute. Five clams. One minute, though. They're perfect. They all popped open. Nice and clean looking. I really like 
16 clams. Yeah? Yeah. I only cooked five. Clams, they gotta be an inch and a half. All right, so we're gonna shuck some clams and make some clams casino next with the old clam knife. I'll give you some really cool facts, though. You're gonna be amazed by how you look. I guarantee it. All right, shucking clams 101. Here's the deal. This how it was explained to me when I was 15. If you knock on a clam's door, he won't let you in. So you want to be really kind of, you, you got to lose your soul and be very ginger before you do this. You got to be gentle and coax it out. Right. Maybe rub it a little bit. Get so nice we'll put them back in there. You can put them in the freezer for a half hour Just before before you shuck them. Dull, I'm trying to make a movie here, buddy. So it's called a bivalve. It has two valves, two shells on the outside. And we get the knife and I've had I've worked with people that sharpen these knives though. I've sharpened one. It's really quite dangerous to have them sharp. You want them kind of on the dull side. Well, you get the uh, if you're right-handed knife in the right hand, clam in the left hand. This thumb here and the top of that shell. See how that's going? That's the direction you want it. If you're left-handed, watch a different movie. So you want to get it between the valves and wiggle the knife back and forth like this wiggle the knife and pull in with these fingers I'm not pushing in with this with this hand that's how people cut their thumbs and tendon damage and all that kind of stuff so get it between the valves give it a wiggle and pull in now there's a muscle here the anterior adductor muscle and a muscle here the posterior adductor muscle you want to cut through the anterior just like that pull the knife out pull the knife out and push up on the knife like this and come around and cut the posterior adductor muscle across the top of the shell all right so the knife is in to the top of the shell flip the clam open and the anterior muscle we've cut in half so you got to take that top part off the top shell let me see you can take that top part off the top shell and then the whole bottom. Just pull that bottom right out there like that. Just the top shell off. And I guess I'll put that in there. That's ready to go. And I don't want all that liquid in there, so I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to leave these sit on the plate for a little while. I'll show you that again. muscles, the anterior and posterior adductor muscles, all they do is, I mean, all animal muscles, all they do is they pull together. So how does a clam open when it needs to dig into the mud? Good question, Jim. This is how it does it. So the muscles pull together and there's a mechanism within this clam to pull it back open. That mechanism right here is the hinge, this black part right there. It is grown in such a way that it's, it's longer on the inside than it is on the outside. So it always wants to pull the muscle back open. That's the other muscle that a clam poss can't possibly have. It would have stuff on the outside of its shell if that was the case to pull it open. Pretty neat adaptation. Dill, you probably didn't know that. You're not listening, I know. No, I definitely didn't know what you're right. I don't know what you're talking about, so I don't know. Uh, another neat thing with the with the clams is, so a muscle, you can take a muscle and you can push the shells, like push this shell that way and this shell that way, leewardly, right? A clam, you can't do that. And the reason you can't do that is because it has these, these teeth here that hinge together. shells from being, well, unless you break them off like that, they keep them from uh, going laywardly because these things are favorite food of starfish. But uh, 
Alright, we're just gonna rifle through a bunch of these. piece of bacon, piece of cheese in the oven 15 to 20 minutes until the bacon's crisp. There, uh, 15 minutes right on the button. And they could grow to go into the broiler after to brown them on top. But uh, I can't turn the oven up or down because Dylan's knife is in it. Oh, never mind, I gotta turn it off. Yeah, he can go turn up his oven for the knife, but I can't turn up the oven for my clams. But, they're gonna be good just the same. You don't have to see me eat them. I know how good they are. You won't know unless you try them. Two more recipes to go. The rest of those clams are going home with me. I'll show you tomorrow. I get home from work, how to pack them away and all that kind of stuff. All right, it is four long working days later and these clams are fine. I haven't checked them. You know, normally you'd have to call the clams. You'd have to go through them every day to make sure they're still alive because once one goes it's like uh, you know the bad apple scenario they all seem to go but this is how you want to keep them you want a lot of air circulation around the clams all right so I have this uh, this shelf in this this really really high quality refrigerator slash kegerator that I have here and the air circulation around the clams is imperative all right I'll explain that maybe while you're watching the clams cook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, top neck size clams. This clam, you know, that size right there. I'm going to shuck them, put them on the half shell. I have the grill heating up outside and we're going to go ahead and grill them and I'll explain that uh, when the time comes. And I am also going to be cooking this. Here, I'm going to get that out. This is uh, pork that was given to me from my employer. Hell yeah, I got some sushi as well. I mean, I work with the greatest people on the planet. I really do. Wild Alaskan sockeye salmon sushi. Hell yeah, it's gonna be a great meal. start sizzling like that. I'm gonna leave them go for a little bit and then dump the liquid off. If there's any liquid left. Liquid's dumped off. Add a butter. Add a butter. Hell yeah, clean it up. 
the inside. All right, boys, here it is. We got the clams on the grill. We got uh, wild sockeye, spicy salmon, and we got the uh, the pork, grilled pork. The pork wasn't hot enough, so I added some uh, habaneros to it. And it's probably hot enough now. what you want them to look like. A little bit dry, fully cooked. The, uh, the butter kind of evaporated out a little bit. Still a bit in there though. That's what you want. Lift and dip. Drop and reel. My second favorite clam recipe. It's hard to put them in order. One of my favorite three or four clam recipes. They're real easy. Your house doesn't smell like you know, fish when you're done. Not that that's a problem for me, but a problem for most of the people I deal with. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I was only going to make a half a dozen. I'm glad I made so many. So why... Why... Why a dry? Why do you keep the, the clams dry? So think about a clam when it gets washed up high and dry on a sandbar after a storm, right? That clam needs to survive high and dry until the next storm or the next high tide. So what it'll do is it? And I wish I had a clam in here. I could show you. I could demonstrate with the clam, but. What it'll do is between the valves, once it gets dry, it's in the sun, it can't lose moisture. It's a, it, it'll be a death trap for it, right? If it tries to dig into dry sand, you know, that foot will get all dried out with the salt. It just, it would end badly for the clam. So what they do is they get their shells really tightly together and they excrete on the inside, the, uh, the mantle, the part that excretes the shell. It exudes a... Uh, calcium, a calcium layer around the lip of the shell, around this part of the shell up here, and that calcium layer will keep the moisture within the clams, within the valves, for a really, really long time, depending on how moist it is, you know, like condensation in the morning, it, it, on a sandbar, right? There, it, it can stay alive for a really long time if you control the refrigeration and the dryness. As soon as it's on a plate, like a plate with saran wrap or in water, it will think it's back in its environment. It's wet, right? It can dig in. So it will break that that calcium layer on the inside of the two valves. And once it does that, it's kind of exerted all of its effort into trying to survive for that length of time and boy is that lens dirty. I, I think that lens looks like my Sam Witwicky glasses. I apologize if it's uh if it's a grainy picture. But the uh the clam will let go and it'll die quickly after. So if you're if you got a bunch of clams together, which they're not together when they're on a on a sandbar, maybe they are, maybe it you know, maybe it doesn't matter, but once one lets go in a bag of clams that you're that you've purchased and you want to consume one lets go moisture it dies shell pops the next one thinks it's in moisture it you know like that's the bad apple effect that's why you got to keep them dry you got to keep air going around them trick the clam into being as absolutely delicious as it can possibly be and I'll tell you what, this right here, I don't know, the steamed clams in the microwave are pretty damn good, but yeah, the casinos are pretty good. I can't put a, I can't tell you which is better. This is one of my favorites. Clams and, clams and uh, pork go really, really well together. Clams and sushi, never had sushi till about 10 months ago sashimi all the time but not sushi I'm gonna tear this up first the only thing that goes better than clams and pork possibly is 
clams and beer. Hell yeah. So tomorrow, Mikey, Mikey and I, I don't know, maybe Mikey and I, maybe just me, gonna go surf fishing tomorrow morning. So hopefully tomorrow night, fried clams. That's gonna be the next one. Fried top necks. Or small cherry, large top necks, small cherry stones. That is one of my favorites. One of the, the one of my four favorites. Hell yeah. It'll be awesome. Is that Mike? We've made it. I gotta do the intro. Welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. Jersey Jim here and Mike. And today we're down uh, Island Beach State Park. Got the four rods with us. We are surf fishing today. Gonna drive on the beach. Hell yeah. Alright, so we've been here about an hour. And we fished the surf a few different spots on the way down. We made it to the inlet finally. Beautiful morning, no fish yet, but I still have faith. Mikey doesn't have faith. He doesn't think there's any fish down here. Ain't no fish in this damn lake. That's what he just said to me. I proved him wrong. We got a dead low tide at 8.30. Salooner high time, 6.30 to 8.30. It is now 6.30, so I am hopeful. There are fish in this lake. Hell yeah. It's a bass. It's a boss. It's a boss. Yep. Man, they fight hard in this current. Not bad, Mikey. Yeah, man. He's a short, but I'll take it. Not bad at all, Mike. Yeah, he's a he's a stocky fish for sure. Hell yeah! I right, gotta get a picture of this. Would you mind going into the jeep and grabbing my phone, Mike? As soon as you catch a fish, you said. As soon as you catch a fish. I told you I was getting hit. I, I was just kidding. I thought it was a rock, but I just wanted to keep you interested. Didn't want to leave early. Hell yeah. That's a beautiful thing right there. So, Mike, you agree there's fish at Island Beach State Park? A few. Okay, just a few. Not terribly large. <laughs> I think it's a bust today, Mike. And boy, is that lens dirty. <laughs> Not too bad. I get to go home and fry clams though, Mike. That's exciting. Excellent. Yeah, I'd like some fried fluke as well, but Mike couldn't produce no, a single not fluke. Not one. You're slipping up in your old age, Mike. Nary a fluke. Nary a fluke and barely a striper. Well, for you anyway. My striper, striper is okay. Your striper was nice. Yeah. Chunky little bastard. Chunky, chunky monkey. Stimpy. You remember Ren and Stimpy? Yeah. Stimpy. You sick monkey. You idiot. <laughs> you sick monkey. That was a twisted show. That was a Billy West. Did you ever see uh, The Adventures of Flapjack? No. No. I, don't I, know. I, I don't imagine Flapjack. you had. That was just as twisted as that. Was it? Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. Cow and Chicken. You never saw that one either. Yep. Cow That's and it. Chicken? Cow and Chicken. Yeah, it was kind of kind of disturbing. Bizarre. Yeah, very disturbing. Uh, it was a good trip, Mikey. Just the same. We didn't get stuck. That's right. The, the Jeep, Jeep started. started. The, yeah, we still got a speedometer, tachometer, odometer, oil pressure. We got no air in the tires, and we got to drive 25 for about eight miles. But it is what it is. So that was awesome, Mikey. It was a good trip. Maiden voyage in the Jeep on Island Beach State Park. Excellent. So, uh, just got back from fishing. Uh, what was today? May 21st. These clams are now five days old and they are still fine. No problems at all. A little bit of moisture leakage there, but they've been sitting out for a few minutes. So, fried clams, my friends. Fried clams. That's what's going on. I have. Uh, well, I didn't finish that yet, but I have just regular flour. I thought I had breadcrumbs, but cornmeal and cayenne pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, 
no salt. That's in this one. We're gonna go ahead and uh, shuck these clams. Now fried clams, it's kind of kind of dangerous frying clams because they have such a high moisture content. So we're gonna go ahead and shuck these, and we need to eliminate some of that moisture. So we're just gonna drop them on paper towel, just like that. And I should have some some uh, large cherry stone small chowder clams in the fridge. I'll probably cook them up as well, shuck them. We're going to leave them on the paper towels for, uh, you know, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, let the uh, moisture get sucked out of them. Because when you drop a liquid item in oil, it tends to splash. Found that out the hard way when I was in my, in my youth. Got a hot splash of oil in my eyeball. Quite painful, so it's an imperative step. You don't want to skip this step here at all. So after they sit for 10 minutes, I'll show you what I'm going to do next with them. I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. I, I like. And there's only, what, six there? Only five there. Clearly, I need to shuck some more. All right, so they've been sitting for about uh, 10 minutes. See, some some more liquid came out of them there. And the breading is now, the, the flour, rather, is stuck to the clam. I dumped the, the, the flour out, or I would re-dip them into the flour, but got to wash the dishes as we're going along because I'm quite tired as I uh, went fishing today at 4 o'clock. In the morning, it's now probably four o'clock in the afternoon. I go work tomorrow. Work uh, yeah. <clears throat> Got to get some sleep. But so we're gonna to the two eggs. And I have like a half a dozen clams in there. We're gonna add some hot sauce. I'm gonna whisk that up a little bit, just a like of that, and then the clams are gonna go into that and then into the cornmeal and we're gonna, we're gonna let them soak up that cornmeal a little bit oh that's one of them chowder clams that's gonna be good yeah the bigger clams work really well for this like smaller ones they don't take any time to cook and the bigger ones because it's gonna cook really fast they still they're still quite tender so that's it. We'll eat the, you know, like we'll uh, bread these up, and like I said, you can use uh, flour for this. I, I prefer to use flour, but I can't seem to find it. I'm having kind of a senior moment. I don't know where I put it. I know I have some somewhere in here in my studio, but I just can't find it. So cornmeal's gonna have to work. It's gonna be good, and uh, so we'll we'll bread these up. Or cornmeal these up and then back on the plate leave them sit for a minute and then I get some oil heating up over there and we'll go ahead and fry them up they, I think this is gonna be my favorite meal like I've never made all four of my favorite meals in the same you know three four or five day time span I, the raw one's definitely probably at the bottom of my list for how to eat clams. You know, it's just not something that I'm into. I, clams are like a like a like a twisted box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. You can get Genge fever. You can get malaria. You can get uh, typhoid. You can just uh, all kinds of nasty stuff. Malaria. I might have already said malaria, but I am quite sleep de sleep deprived at this moment. So just want to get as much breading on there as possible. Ah, I just realized I don't have cocktail sauce. Damn it, Jim. Damn it, Jim. All right, so the clams have been double dipped. They've uh, sat for like ten minutes to absorb that moisture on the outside. Got the oil. Yeah, it's hot. Get the oil hot enough. I'm gonna drop them in. All right, boys. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Look at this stuff popping out. That's ah, a beautiful thing. We're gonna let them go about uh, 
three, four minutes aside. Yeah, probably three minutes aside. Yeah, less than three minutes aside. Probably two and a half minutes aside. And they're going to go on to uh, this plate here. And put them on that plate. And we're going to give them a shot of... We're going to use the salt shaker on them. A little bit of salt. And now will be flipping wonderful. I, I'm so... This movie's been so much fun to make. Like, it's not a fish, but... Like I'm eating well, right? Like I'm cooking this and I'm eating well. So, yeah, we'll plate it up and I'll, uh, you know, I'll eat. You know, I think I enjoyed making this movie, video, movie, more than any other video that I've made. Here's the end product. You know, the clams, the uh, sushi, and, well, I didn't make the sushi, but it's the potatoes and that well-deserved beer. I ate a clam and had a sip of the beer. Just one though. Um, it's not it's not fish, but it's seafood, and you know, like I am obsessed with seafood. So, like a lot of information in this video. I'm glad I could share it with you. These things are delicious. They are absolutely delicious. Cornmeal. I prefer the breadcrumbs. But then again, I prefer cocktail sauce, <laughs> and I don't have either. So next best thing, I this might be my favorite way to have clams. Steam clams. I don't know. Grilled clams? Clams, you see, I can't decide. But anyway, really enjoyed making this movie. I hope you enjoyed it too. Going to be another one coming up real soon. I got a lot of stuff. Uh, the fishing today. So the fishing today, I'll post some of that footage here. This is a good spot, Mike. Oh, is he off? You need me to get down there and land him? <laughs> He's a big one. All right. That's, okay. that's picture quality there, Mike. You got to get a picture of that. We'll get the uh, lighthouse in the background. It'll be an excellent spot composition. Burning. Spot burning. Spot burning. Yeah, you want to come down here and catch a uh, 10, 12? 12 inch. I have a tape measure. We can run back and get the scale if you're really curious too. You can say he's under seven pounds. <laughs> under seven? You sure? I think he's borderline. There, is that something special or what? Look at this. It needs cocktail sauce. I have ketchup, you know, like I brought ketchup out, but I don't think that's gonna do it. Well, anyway, hey, thanks for watching. This is uh, gonna be a long movie, but a lot of good information in there. Hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it. You all have a wonderful day, and as always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. They're in the back of the Jeep in the box. That's awesome. He was right in close too, Mike. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I, th I thought it might have been a rock, but it felt like a hit. Just wanted to keep you interested.